I thought we'd spend a little bit of time talking about what uni is going to be like since this is your start and it's going to be nothing like school at all, I hope, uh, for you. And then we're going to talk a bit about the course in this first lecture. We're not actually going to do any programming in this first lecture, but I'm going to give you some puzzles and get you to do some thinking. We, we do our programming in labs, so you've probably noticed you have the lectures. And in there you then spend two hours actually doing stuff. And because in computing, of course, like probably with most skills, uh, talking about it and listening to me talk about it is interesting, but you're not going to learn a skill until you do it, and it's got to be in your fingertips, not just in your ears. Uh, okay, so uh, I wanted to talk just a little bit about university. Um, and I want to talk about uh, computing and how pleased I am that you're doing computing, because computing, I think, is truly amazing. Uh, I like it because it uses my brain, and I really like using my brain. And I find, and I can see some smiles and nods, anyone that's done any programming so far, and we don't assume that anyone has, but anyone that's done any programming so far has seen that it's essentially a never-ending stream of puzzles and challenges. Um, and you use your brain. You hit a problem, you have to solve it using your brain, and that is so stimulating. It's also incredibly frustrating until you solve it, but the nice thing about computing is none of the problems are ever too big. You can always solve them. And after a while, you just get this adrenaline shot over and over again from um, just so hitting a problem, can't get it, ah! Uh, so I love that. It's just fantastic. So that's thing number one I like about it. It's not a job where if you went on to do a computing job, your brain would just not be used. Um, uh, it, it's a job where you constant, or a career, even if you're not earning money doing it, it's a career where you are constantly using your mind and being stimulated and challenged, and that's fantastic. So that's reason one I like it. Uh, reason two I like it is you get to make stuff. And I really love making things, and that's why I think architecture would be quite cool. You get to actually write programs. So it's, it has all the fun of maths. I quite like maths. I'm sorry, embarrassed if you don't like maths. I like maths because I get to solve lots of puzzles in maths and problems, and that's fantastic. I don't like maths because of calculus and trigonometry and having to memorize lots of stuff. But I do like it for all the amazing challenges and the joy of seeing amazing things emerge. Computing has that. But at the end of the day with maths, you've got a paper with scribbles on. At the end of the day with computing, you've got Facebook. You've just invented Google. <laughs> You know, you, you've, you've built something. You've made an image renderer. You've made um, some fantastic program that helps blind people see or deaf people hear that um, help elderly people overcome uh, um, dementia. That's funny. I couldn't think of that word. Um, <laughs> computing's just intensely practical. The world has, I like to think of it like this, the world has millions of problems. Mankind's good at generating problems. Life's not perfect. We've got more problems than we can think of. And most of the problems have been with us for a very long time, say, since the ancient Greeks, probably. And now computing's just emerged on the scene. It's this tool that can be used to solve problems. But it's so new, and it's changing so quickly and developing and becoming powerful so rapidly that there are no doubt millions of ways of using these tools to solve these problems that are so obvious in hindsight that no one's just thought of doing it. There's all these, every year my students go out and some start startups and do amazing things, and whenever they talk about what they're doing, I always think, oh yeah, that's a great idea. Why didn't I think of that? But I didn't, but they did. They just suddenly saw, oh, there's a problem I can solve with this, and I can do that. So they do stuff, and it's useful stuff. Uh, and that sort of leads to the third reason I like it, which is I think it's really important in life to have a good life and to make some difference in the world, not just to like, be a parasite and earn lots of money and, and die rich. <laughs> What's the point of that? But I think it's good to do good things and to help people. Um, and that's why I like computing, because you can do amazing things and help. I, I, like, I mean... I don't even want to talk about the whole Facebook thing and Egypt and Libya and all that sort of stuff that's happening now because it's so much in the news. But just the idea that these enabling technologies are enabling things to happen that t even 10 years ago no one would have thought of. You know, it's just the whole world is changing all the time. My PhD student, Roland, has just had his PhD accepted with glowing praise from his assessors. And he's now heading off to set up a way of doing online elections. And online elections means you can use the internet to do voting. And he's a security freak. Uh, he loves security and protocols and cryptography. And using security, he has um, come up with ways of doing elections that are fair and uncorruptible. Because, of course, the problem with elections is the incumbents, the people in power, the people running the election, have a strong and massive invested interest in rorting the system. And elections are so hard to check. You know, it's just done once. It's done really infrequently. It's got all the hallmarks of a bad security problem. It's not something that happens regularly. When it's done, there's not much of an audit trial. The people in charge of auditing it and looking after it are the people that benefit from winning it. The incentives for winning an election are so vast. Someone told me the, the president of Egypt 
is the richest man in the world. He's richer than Bill Gates. Yeah, he has a strong incentive to be the president of Egypt. Um, okay, so, so everything's lined up that elections should be corrupt and not work. And so he's working on these ways of doing elections online that can't be cheated, that can't be faked, that can't be coerced, that afterwards you can't have your legs broken if you vote for the wrong person, or they can't insert extra votes in the system, or they can't miscount the votes. But yet they can't have approved how you voted. It's fantastic. He's going to change the world, and I can see him going off now doing all these fantastic things. And, and that's why I like computing. So, those three things. You do cool stuff, solving problems. You do cool stuff, making things. You do cool stuff, helping people. And Amazing. Wow. So, that's where you'll be in three years' time, leaving and starting to do that sort of stuff. But now we're at the beginning, so let's talk a little bit about the um, starting now. Now, after all that talking, uh, I always think that at the first lecture, because I remember my first computing lecture, and I remember sitting there, and I was feeling a little bit nervous. I suspect a lot of you might be feeling nervous. Uh, you're probably looking at the people around you and thinking either they're smarter than you or, or they just know much more about computing already than you. And you might even be feeling you're a bit of a fraud or something like that because you don't know anything and the people behind you when you sat down were talking loudly about something, showing off to each other essentially, uh, and <laughs> speaking in acronyms to each other really quickly. And, and, and you're freaked out because you don't know the acronyms that they know. <laughs> And it's making you nervous. So I just wanted to reassure everyone that that's absolutely fine. In this course, we assume that no one knows anything about computing to start. And I should reassure you also that at the end of the course, the people that do the best, it doesn't seem to be strongly correlated with how much computing they knew when they started. We have people that knew a lot when they start that do really well, people that knew a lot when they start that don't do well, people that knew nothing at the start that do really well, and people that knew nothing at the start that don't do really well. It doesn't, it, there doesn't seem to be any sort of a link. What's that? You need, we need it, we need, what's your name, Zia. young man? Zia, I have a job for you. <laughs> At the end of semester, come and see me, and we will produce such a chart to show the students next year. Will you remember to do that? Sure. <laughs> I have to trust you, because I have that, what's it? <laughs> I'm not good at remembering stuff. Okay. All right, good. Thanks, Ian. That's really awesome. Um, and that's the right question to ask. We need to see more data than just me dividing into four categories. We need to see correlations and coefficients and so on, so on, so on, so on. So I like to classify students into three groups, roughly, just to get a, a, an idea on, on everyone's mindset. And um, so as to not like rank them or use one, two, three, or anything like that, I'll just say their colors, say randomly red, um, green, and blue. So the red students, I reckon, are the students that already know heaps about programming, that are turning up here and they've been programming forever. They probably wish they weren't even doing this course because they're so awesomely good at programming that they shouldn't be here. And they're just amazing and they're really smart and they've spent their whole life in their bedroom programming <laughs> and they probably did SDD at school or chose not to because it was too pathetic. And they've probably made hundreds of awesome programs and they've probably um, you know, got a lot of stuff on the GitHub and they're just contributing stuff everywhere and they're reading stuff and they're hacking into things and they're running anonymous and they're just fantastic. <laughs> And they're very, 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 very confident. And that's really the thing that I, I want to focus on here, just that they're very, 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 very confident. And then at the other end, we've got a whole lot of people that have never done computing before, uh, and have probably never programmed before, have used computers. I assume you've all used computers and know how to use a mouse and know about files and folders and things, but nothing more elaborate than that. And they're normally feeling very, 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 very nervous at this point. And then there's people in the middle who will say the Greens. Now, the Greens are... Uh, that's the first time I've ever seen them in the middle. <laughs> uh, the Greens are... Um, uh, maybe haven't, can't program or don't know much about programming, but they're sort of not too scared. They're thinking, yeah, I don't program, but it'll work out. I'll get there. It's okay. Everything's cool. So the Greens are sort of uh, not too freaked out or anything like that. So the Greens are actually sort of pretty okay. Um, we don't have to worry too much about the Greens because you're right. You will work it out. You will do really well. Everything's going to be awesome. Um, but I should just talk, say a few words briefly to the reds and the blues. Uh, if you're a red and very confident, can I encourage you not to think, oh, I'm so awesome, I can't learn anything, because we will be teaching you um, some things maybe that you haven't seen, and importantly, you'll be doing it in groups. You'll be doing it with peers. And it turns out there's a whole lot in computing to do with working in a team and interacting with other people that if you master it, you can do amazing things. And probably the hardest thing about being a self-taught programmer, because you've been on your own up till now, because there maybe hasn't been anyone at your school that's also interested in it, is you're good at doing the solo stuff, 
but there's some group stuff and some other sort of background stuff to the craft of writing programs that you've never been compelled to learn because you've never needed to. And you will benefit amazingly from doing that. The awesome programs and the awesome things that happen these days are now largely done by groups of awesome people, uh, not just by individuals. It's very hard for an individual now to do something completely amazing. Um, so I, I just strongly advise you not to get too cocky, but instead to approach the course in this generous spirit thinking, well, I'm going to learn new stuff. I'm going to set myself my own challenges in this course. And at the end, uh, I will make sure that I haven't wasted my time at uni for this semester. I've, I've developed and changed in some way. So just, I guess, just, I don't want to say humility or humbleness, because you probably are really awesome. But somehow, just be open, I guess, is what I'm trying to say. Open to learning new things, even though you probably already do know lots of things. And also be aware that often the people in this group don't go so well in the course. Because the early assignments, which are quite easy, they do really well on and they get a bit cocky. And then the last assignment, which is a little bit hard, they explode in a pile of mess, making something a bit too big and too elaborate that doesn't quite work and then they end up doing really badly. Whereas it's the slow and steady people that sometimes pull off the awesome stuff at the end. And the people that are nervous, um, so what am I going to say? What do you think am I going to say to the blue people? What's that? What's that? Get out of my lecture theater now! What's that? Leave the theater. Yeah, leave the fear. Oh, leave the fear at the door. I thought you meant leave the theater by the door. <laughs> Sorry, I misunderstood. Yeah, leave leave your fear at the door in the fear bucket. You don't have to worry about it. Everything's going to be okay. You're going to have to work a little bit harder than the people that have already programmed for a while because they just know some stuff that you don't know. But your brain is as good as their brain. You just got to know a few bits and pieces, and pretty soon you'll be just coasting down the hill on skis just like them. But you do have a little bit of extra work at the beginning just to learn a few things. Don't get daunted and don't get depressed. I think the main advantage that this group have over this group is actually not that they know extra stuff. The stuff they know from here will seem like it's really important and you're devastated by not knowing it. But we try and structure everything so knowing extra things doesn't really help you with the task we've got. You just need to know the things we've taught you in class to do them. The real advantage of these guys over these guys is these guys have... Um, like a sort of a confidence that when they hit a hard problem, these guys have hit hard problems lots of times before and they know it's okay. They know, ah, oh, I recognize this. It's a problem. I don't know how to solve it. Oh, well, okay, I'll just try this and try that. And they're all relaxed and sort of mellow about it. And eventually they solve it. And every time they do that, they reinforce in their mind that they can solve things. Whereas you guys, the nervousness you have is probably going to be that every time you see a problem, you're going to freak out and think, I'll never solve it. La, 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 la. So we've just got to make sure you solve a few of them that after a while you start to think, oh, yeah, hey, I can solve those problems. Because, of course, you can. And you'll be doing amazing things at the end. All right. Um, that's probably all I wanted to say about that. Are there any questions? Does everyone think where they are? I mean, there's all sorts of intermediate colors, of course. What if you're sort of partway between here and here? What, what would I call you? Oh, you're a yellow. <laughs> partway between here and here. <laughs> Cyan or something. I don't know. Now, what about halfway between here and here? No, you're green. <laughs> no, we're gentle. Okay, cool. Um, and my main piece of advice now, just as you start, is please just try. Never give up. Never get freaked out. Just be calm and slow and steady. And if you hit a problem you can't solve, then back off a little bit and try a smaller problem. And if, you're ever hitting, if ever anything feels overwhelming and you can't do everything, just relax and think, well, I'm not going to do everything. I'm just going to do something. But never give up. Just keep slowly working at it. Keep that optimistic sort of cheerful nature going. And by the, I think programming really is a mental thing. It's a state of mind. And by the end of the course, you'll be amazed at where you've got to. So that's my one piece of advice. If you're writing down notes now, oh, piece of advice. Try things. Don't give up. Don't freak out. Uh, I've got a series of puzzles to sort of get you in the frame of mind of thinking like a uni student or thinking like a computer scientist, really. Um, the first one comes from something my daughter said this morning uh, as she was looking at the biscuits. And we had lots of those biscuits that were pink with little hundreds and thousands on them. And she was a marveling at how many there were. And she said, I like them so much. I would like, she's just learning big numbers, I would like 20,000 of them. <laughs> and I said, oh, that's quite a lot. She said, yes. No, I would like 5 million of them. I said, okay. And she said, which is bigger? <laughs> and I said, oh, five million's bigger. And she said, would that fit in the house? <laughs> and that's my question for you. Would five million of those little ice vovos, would that fit in your house? How big's your house? <laughs> no, in your house. In your house. Yes. What are yeah. the dimensions of that? Well, um, well, I don't really know. That's a good question. <laughs> um, yeah, so it's good when someone asks you a question. You could just 
go away and answer the question. But I think what a scientist does, or an engineer, or someone who's a good at solving problems, is they come back at you with another question. So, can your house fill up with these biscuits? Ask me some questions. How big are the biscuits? How big are the houses? That's awesome. It's good to ask questions. I don't know how big the biscuits are. They're like, uh, does anyone have a biscuit here? <laughs> All right, let's not make a biscuit. Let's make it um, ah, a standard SI unit, a piece of toast. <laughs> How many, how many pieces of toast would it take to fill up this lecture theatre? No, I don't want you to call out the answer. I want you to work it out and write it down. Okay, go. You've got a minute. This is... Shh, 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 shh. This is music to my ears. There's, there's nothing a lecturer likes more than this. Oh, no, don't call out the answer. Don't call out the answer. Is a toast thick cut? And now, now, that's good to ask a question. What am I going to say? What am I going to say to that question? Which is a good question. <laughs> yes, but what's that? Oh no, I'm going to say do it both. Good question. Good question, young man. Please don't call out the answer. I just like to see how people are going and how they're trying to solve it. Yeah. How tall am I? <laughs> smaller, smaller, smaller. Bigger, 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 bigger. I'm about six foot. 184. So we're going to stop now. Stop, 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 stop. You guys are mad on toast. Isn't that nice again, isn't it?